A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to the disciples that he must go to Jerusalem to suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and religious scholars, and that he must be killed and on the third day raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Rabbi, he said, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, get yourself behind me, you Satan. You are trying to make me stumble and fall. You are setting your mind not on the things of God, but on the things of, of mortals. Then Jesus said to the disciples, if you wish to come after me, you must deny your very selves, take up the instrument of your own death, and begin to follow in my footsteps. If you would save your life, you will lose it. But if you would lose your life for my sake, you will find it. What profit would you show if you gained the whole world but lost yourself? What can you offer in exchange for your very self? The promised one will come in the glory of Abba God, accompanied by angel messengers, and will enjoy all according to their conduct. The good news of salvation. <laughs> Unlike most of us within a North American cultural milieu, our Hebrew spiritual ancestors knew that along, along with love, praise, and petition, a deep relationship with God can withstand angry outbursts and even some whining. In fact, this is a cultural trait in many parts of the world, including the Mediterranean area. Jer Jeremiah is the champion lamenter of the Hebrew scriptures. The Hebrew tradition of fear of God which is utter awe of God's greatness and compassion, allowed for the expression of deep passion. When we hear Jeremiah cry, you duped me. Our translation has made this complaint polite, washing out its passion. A truer translation to what Jeremiah said to God was, you seduced me. Lord, and I let myself be seduced. But listen as Jeremiah continues to pray. I want to quit this ministry, but your word is like a fire at my heart. When I try to hold it in, it explodes inside me. I can't withstand it. It's about to break my bones. Now, according to Sister Mary McGlone, that's a lesson that's a, that's a lesson with passion. What had happened to Jeremiah was that he received a new perspective. God enticed him into a new mindset and course of action that he didn't want 
but couldn't refuse. This is what Paul tries to encourage the Romans in the second reading, as he says, don't conform to this age. Let yourself be transformed to learn what is really good and pleasing and perfect. Today's gospel invites us to enter into the, into the Christian ad adventure with countercultural passion. After last week's rendition of Peter's proclamation of faith, Jesus tells the disciples that being the Messiah is not what they would like to imagine. In response, moments after proclaiming unconditional faith, Peter becomes Jesus' tempter, echoing the devil who urged Jesus to use his power for himself and make God a security blanket, Peter reproached Jesus for talking about suffering. Echoing his words to the devil himself, Jesus told Peter to get behind him, using the same vocabulary that he used when he invited Peter to discipleship Jesus told Peter, you are to follow me, not vice versa. With that, Jesus offered Peter the divine seduction. If you would save your life, you will lose it. But if you lose yourself for my sake, you will find it. In other words, focusing on your own safety is a vicious circle. You'll never have enough of it. If you are free enough to give yourself, nobody can threaten you ever again. Jesus was reminding Peter to remember why he had followed him in the first place. Jesus didn't call his friends to ascetic sacrifice, but to a life full of joy coming from the freedom to be for others. This was not a call for a discipleship of cheering a prophet on, nor studying under a rabbi, but a call to Peter and company to share in Jesus's very purpose in life. He was giving them an all or nothing choice to either become part of him or to make, or to, to make their own way wherever it would lead. It is not insignificant that Christians choose the cross or crucifix as their central symbol. We Christians recognize that Jesus talked a lot about losing one's life. Christianity can be viewed as a descending form of religion, where the primary language emphasis is unlearning, letting go, surrendering, dying, and serving others. This pattern of transformation that the next life, the life that reality offers us, is not death avoided, but always death transformed. For, for Christians, the goal is love and not the overcoming of suffering. Death and life are two sides of the same coin, and we cannot have one without the other. Each time we offer the surrender, each time we trust the dying, our faith is led to a deeper level and we discover a larger self underneath. We decide to not push ourselves to the front of the line and something much better happens in the back of the line. We let go of narcissistic anger and we start feeling much happier. We surrender our need to control others and our relationships blossom. <clears throat> Yet each time it is a choice and each time it, it is a kind of dying. It seems to be the pattern of all growth and evolution. It's the same pattern in every atom, in every human relationship, and in every galaxy. If this pattern is true, it has, it has been true always and everywhere, in every culture and religion. 
indigenous peoples, Hindu scripture, Buddha, Moses, Muhammad, and Jesus all saw it early in human history and named it as a necessary dying. Jeremiah's experience of being a prophet and LGBTQ plus Catholics experience of coming out share one major thing in common, a commitment to telling the truth. When we try to hide in the shadows, we grow weary holding it in. We cannot endure it. Telling the truth to another about who we are is not part of some big conspiracy, but rooted in a much simpler, much humbler impulse, the desire to be honest and authentic with others. Of course, there are good reasons, especially in some circles today for prudence and discretion. Practicing discernment and having a loving and supportive primary community helps when doing this. And Jesus is coming out as the Christ in response to Peter is also reminiscent of instances of a coming out story. LGBTQ folks' commitment to telling the truth about their own experiences can be, deep, can be a deeply re religious impulse, an act of fidelity to the truth, and thereby an act of fidelity to the God who is truth. In refusing to comply with forms of don't ask, don't tell, we are refusing to be complicit with entities that hide or obscure truth. These acts of being minor prophets have begun to create the kind of world many hoped for and helped to enlarge the tent in Catholic spaces. So let's take today's scripture readings as teachings about prayer and discipleship. Both Jeremiah and Peter had a bone to pick with God. It had to do with going where they never intended to go. They received new perspectives. Nothing was forced on them. They had their own ideas and God enticed, seduced them beyond their safe boundaries. Today, we're reminded that whether we like it or not, the God of Jesus is the great seducer. This God who risked, risked creation and incarnation wants us to share the divine passion, to provoke us into becoming prophets and finding our new life through letting go.